been a few years since I last ordered a car new. I think the last time was the 488 Pista. Well, I'm getting a BAC Mono R, and I'm very excited about it. And I think it may be the last fancy non-daily driver car that I get for a very long time. Let me tell you why that is. The direction that the car industry is headed, it's, you know, turbochargers and electrification, and I totally get why that's the case. Not only is it more efficient, it is just genuinely faster. That said, I find myself less and less interested in the new models that manufacturers are offering, even though the cars are far faster. As I get older, which I hate saying, I find myself just more interested in the overall driving experience far more than, oh, how fast does this get from zero to 60? How fast does it go around a track? Now, that said, uh, the mono is basically the fastest thing that you can get that you can put number of plates on. But that's not why <laughs> I'm I'm choosing to, to get one. Not only that, but just uh, the, the dealership space is in such a bad spot. It's so frustrating, like trying to deal with, with dealers. I basically given up on it in terms of trying to get new car allocations unless you're willing to spend just bonkers bucks over MSRP. It's like you don't even walk in the door. Otherwise, you know, they're doing you the favor of selling you the car. And I just don't, I don't like it. and don't like to play that. So it's really kind of discouraged me from pursuing lots of cars that maybe I would potentially be interested in. But the, it's been such a cool experience with, with the mono. I, I knew about it for ages, right? I saw it on Top Gear all those all those years ago. And I mean, it looked absolutely mental, but you kind of just write it off as like, hey, there's no way I could actually get one of these and be able to drive it. And it's just kind of like, oh, that's a cool thing to see on TV. But the thought of owning one just kind of goes out the window. Started looking more into it over the last year and then started talking with a the, the couple of friends who kind of in similar position to me of like, not really caring about the speed of new cars, but really wanting to get something that's more about the, the experience. And um, one of those one of those friends is very, very uh, vigilant and, and on top of things. It was like, I'm going to reach out to them, going to figure this out, see if it's something feasible. And so he reached out, got the conversation going. Lo and behold, uh, three of us are getting monos. I'm getting an R, one of the others getting an R, and uh, the one who's been very vigilant and on top of things, he's getting the standard mono, but a new kind of updated version of it. We've been talking directly with the folks at BAC, going through the whole process of, of designing what our cars are gonna look like. And it's been a, a very cool, just refreshing change of pace to you know be dealing directly with the manufacturer on the car and going back and forth with the designer and uh, figuring out what the car is gonna look like and knowing you are paying what the manufacturer charges and gonna get a single seater open cockpit car that can run on slicks on the track if you want it to and uh, will be blisteringly fast, but also is just an incredibly unique experience that you're like, how is that even road legal? But it is. Interesting story, actually, is this was already after planning to get it and talking with the factory. I was in the Ford GT, getting gas, about to go for a drive. A mono pulls up next to me at the gas station. I'm like, I've, I've never seen one on the road before, just in public. And I'm like, that's really interesting and fortuitous. So I, I you know, say to the guy, hey, how do you like it? How do you, how long have you had it? Um, I'm getting one of these. And uh, and so we started talking. I end up being like, hey, do you mind if I, I'll follow you up? It'd be cool to, you know, drive behind the car that I'm, I'm gonna be getting. Once we get to the turnaround spot, we talk a little bit more. He says, hey, do you wanna sit in the car? And I'm like, I mean, sure, I guess. I'm sitting in the car. He says, you wanna drive it? I'm like, are you sure about that? Like, you just met me. Just today down the hill at the gas station. Are you sure? Um, and uh, so I just, I gave, fortunately we're about the same height. So it fit because the pedals and the seat are fixed in place. And uh, so it, he, I drive it to just the nearest turnaround point. Nothing too crazy, but oh my God, it's just it's the most mental thing with me just cruising pretty slowly to the turnaround and coming back. I'm like, oh my God, this is, uh, is going to be pretty, pretty wild. It's intimidating, but like different, unique, 
And that's what I'm, you know, that's why I'm interested in it. That was a standard mono from a few years back. So this is the R and it's got huge amounts of updates. It's got more power and they've just, you know, as they've gone, they keep refining the car with each new car they build. Essentially, it just keeps getting better and better. So it's been a great process so far. And I want to show you what we've come up with as far as a design for the car. I want to show you some renders and talk you through the process because it's been really cool so far. How it worked is I went in with a, with a concept of, I like the idea of exposed carbon. They offer full exposed carbon on the monos. Something I wanted on the Ford GT, they couldn't do. Now that they offer it, it's like $300,000, which I don't know if I could have gone and justified. Here, it's not $300,000, fortunately. Uh, so I wanted full exposed carbon. I like the idea of going for like a red tint, but I also see a lot of green carbon that looks really nice on cars and they've done green carbon cars before. So it's like, well, maybe we could do, you know, red carbon, gold highlights, but also throw me some maybe green with gold highlights and we'll, use that as like a jumping off starting point. So this was our first iteration. They sent over a, a, a PDF with just tons of different angles taken out, taken out of V-RED, which is the software that's used for this, and uh, just options to kind of start and, and launch off of. And I like the idea of gold wheels as well. So this was the, just the first part. So we have an exposed red carbon um, with a, a gold BAC is like the basic livery with a cool thing on the, the cannon, I call it the air box. Um, this Ram air air box that, you know, sucks in air. It's supposed to help cool the engine a bit better, generate more power. And um, like it's single seater. Oh, it's so cool. It's a matching helmet in the render and stuff. I will be working on a helmet livery shortly. It's uh, myself and the two others. We're going to get, you know, helmets that will probably the cars don't really match between us. Um, all very different liveries, but we might try to unify it a bit with the helmets and seeing these three driving on the road is going to be mental. So this was kind of my my starting off point was this as a as a scheme um, without, you know, I, I didn't really know what I wanted to do with the gold livery. And Daniel, who is the designer for the liveries at, at BAC, he, he's brilliant at doing this stuff so he can actually take it and start expanding on it after you fed in the basic ideas and you know we just get some screenshots of of different things now this takes that first one and what they did is they added the carbon on the side pods which i really like because i feel like it doesn't do the full carbon justice as much when it's just on the top. This is still all matte exposed carbon all across the sides here, um, which you can see better in some of the close-ups, but I, it feels like it gives it more continuity when the color carries down to the side pods. Um, and so I really, I really like that. It feels like it encapsulates it more. So I, I immediately was like, I, I really quite like that as something I, I want to stick to. And that'll come into play a, a little bit later. And some changes to the wheels with like gold on the outside and then black on the interior. But then they went into green. So this is like a green variation of the red that we started with, still with the gold accents. Um, but green, I really like how the green carbon looks. The thing is, They've done a lot of green carbon cars, understandably, because it looks great. But I didn't, I, I, I wanted to keep it like fairly unique um, versus some of the liveries that they've, they've given to customers already. So as much as I really like the green, and yes, I know you should go with what you want, but I really, the red still looked absolutely great to me. So you're gonna see it's still exposed carbon on the sides. Anyway, now we started getting into some more of like, okay, here's what we could do, adding like a, a full, cool livery scheme on top rather than it just being a, a BAC logo. So they did it on the green ones here instead of the the, the reds, but you can kind of, you know, you can swap it back and forth. And um, so this was like more of a diagonal pattern with exposed carbon, different shade of green, as well as the gold. Also different scheme on the airbox with the, the gold tip, which I quite liked because it like, it really makes it stand out and pop. You know, if you're in the rear view, they really like see the, the airbox the cannon. This was just another thing that was based on some inspiration images that, uh, you know, I had pointed out that I thought was kind of a cool look 
in uh, in the reference images that they had showed. Then there was one final one over here, which is more of like this asymmetric, less directional. But again, see, this is no side pod in the exposed colored carbon. It's just the matte carbon. And I really like it when it has that, that matching carbon to go on the side pods. That's just another one there. So I gave, I gave just a little bit of feedback on that. And um, we went through five iterations, so I may misremember exactly what my feedback was between certain iterations, but we then, you know, we go to the next stage. And what I see in the next stage that they showed me is they give me this way more vibrant shade of exposed red carbon. And they tell me, well, look, we can do, here's the, the before and after. So this is the original exposed carbon. Then they're like, here, we can do this, which is like a new technology that their supplier was gonna be able to do in order to make it like really bright, vibrant red carbon. Because usually when you have exposed red carbon, in order to see the carbon, the red has to be fairly dim because the carbon is, it's black, right? And so there's only so much you can do to add a color on top without causing the carbon to not be visible anymore. You can't, It's this compromise that you have to make, but they had some technology that could make it brighter. And I was like, okay, that's, that's really cool. I like that. We should certainly pursue this. And so this was that with, you know, the gold wheels. It has the gold mono logo with exposed carbon in the barrels. And then we've got the side pods, really ties it in super nicely. I think it's great. And, um, but I was like, I would like to do something a little more than just the BAC logo and have more of a custom livery. But this was just showing it um, with that new kind of vibrant red. And then they showed with, with one of the liveries that we saw in the green before, but applied onto the red. And I was like, okay, it seems like we're onto something. I like the idea of having a livery like this on top of the red, gold wheels i think this is kind of a this is kind of a cool starting point right here i don't know if i exactly want this specific livery but it's like we're definitely moving in in the right direction right and so this had exposed carbon red and the gold there's a little close-up that you can see so what i said was i liked the more directional livery that we saw on the the green car in proposal the first pdf proposal um can we apply that to the red what ends up happening, though, unfortunately, is I quite like this more directional look now. I preferred it to the other one. But I'm, I get told that f I don't know specifics about the manufacturing process. These side pods here are manufactured a different way than the upper, pa upper panels of the car. And this really vibrant red tech that they can do, they can only do on the top. So if I want to have the livery and have it with the exposed red carbon on the sides of the car, it's not going to be feasible with the bright red. So either I'd have to just do a paint that tries to match the red carbon, but you look up close and it's going to be like, that's kind of weird. Why didn't you just do the exposed carbon? You have to explain something. You don't want to explain things about your car to people, right? You want to just work. Um, <laughs> and so either it would have to be like a paint compromise or we would have to revert it back to the original darker shade of red, which is just, you know, more standard when it comes to exposed red carbon cars. But anyway, this was them showing just, you know, what it could look like with this. This is still before they gave me the confirmation that, oh, it, we're not going to be able to do it. But this was they gave it with the side pods and then it was at the top without the side pods and what that looks like. So we then ended up back to the old shade because I'm told I can't do the side pods in the vibrant red. I don't want it to be a mismatch. I want it to be continuous all the way around. So I say, OK, let's revert it back to the old the red carbon that, that's darker, which I don't actually mind. I actually like more of a, a, a muted red. Um, I kept referring to a Ferrari color called Rosso Mugello, and I quite like it. It's more of a darker, darker maroon or Jardon maroon. So we end up getting to this and I start looking at it. And I'm like, you know, I don't actually mind. I don't actually mind. I know it's not as vibrant red as we were getting here, but there's something a little classier looking to me about just this more muted, darker red. And um, so it was 
I was fine with it actually. And then what they did obviously between these two is they refined the livery. I said I wanted to stick with the more directional one, but then I got I got surprised with, oh, you've added, you've added the livery to the side pods. So now not only do I get matching, I actually get livery on the side pods, which is not a common thing that they've done on, on too many cars, is to have the side pods matching the upper part and to also do some, some livery work on them. And so I was like, okay, yeah, yeah, we're, we're really getting somewhere with this. I, I'm really, I'm really liking this. Um, they also, at that point, I just wanted to have one final look like, okay, what if you were to do what we've done, switch it to green carbon? I just want to make sure, right? I just want to make absolutely certain that I don't want to do green carbon. All right, let's just, I want to see it one last time. And after looking at it in the, in the green carbon and then going back to the red, the red, the red did it to me. The red, the red still, I, I preferred it. And so I was like, you know what? We're going to stick with the red. And I prefer this livery, the more directional one, to the uh, the more like half and half with the gold on this side and uh, and then more of the outlines on the other side. I thought that uh, this, this was the one. But I had a couple comments on it. One is this little snaggle tooth up front seemed a little out of place for me. So I asked them if they could just remove that, keep it red carbon. And also... Um, <laughs> the other friends who are getting it, they're like, you trying to, you trying to be Iron Man? You trying to be Tony Stark? I didn't go into this at all with like, oh, I want it to be like an Iron Man color scheme. Um, but it ends up, you know, kind of looking like that. Uh, it looks very, very Iron Man. And right at the time they had just released, um, this, this, photos of their 150th car which was another mono r and what they did is they put the the stats of the car on like the engine displacement power zero to 60 that stuff up they print it or well they paint it on the cannon and i was like that's really cool now i don't want to i don't like want to this is what i'm telling them on the call like i don't want to copy if that's like a no-no you don't have to do it but i really thought that was cool having the stats on the on the cannon and and can we make it say instead of built in Liverpool, can we make it say anyway? So I gave them that feedback, and then they came back with the final. They got rid of the uh, the snaggle tooth part, and what they also did was just a small tweak on the wheels. They made the center caps gold as well when they weren't up to now. It doesn't have the, the full gold patch over here, just the livery elements. The other side has more gold, but you can see the writing. It's subtle. It's subtle, but it's really cool. We'll get a close up. The other side though is just like, oh man, it almost looks like two different cars, right? From from either side. Like you look at one side, it's like mostly gold with a little bit of red carbon. You look at the other side, mostly red carbon with like a little bit of gold. And oh, I just, I'm so happy with, with how it turned out. It looks so cool. And so we got a little, a few extra angles here. This is what it looks like if you're driving behind it on the road, because I wanted to see some angles that, you know, hadn't really been shown before, but it's like you get the gold over here, red carbon over here. From side to side, it just looks like two different cars, essentially, um, which is just super cool. Okay, here we're going to get the, uh, the close up on the cannon. So like the, the other car, it had this basically, it had the upper part, but then where it says powered by Stark Industries, it said built in Liverpool. And um, I was just like, that'd be a cool little Easter egg. I feel like just, you know, because it kind of looks like an Iron Man car, let's embrace it. And uh, powered by Stark Industries. We'll see if, if people catch it when they're looking at the car. Um, but hey, it answers a lot of questions. And if I ever forget a metric, then I can be like, look at the, look at the cannon. It'll tell you everything you need to know. <laughs> and then someone will be like, what's Stark Industries? And I'll be like, it's um, Iron Man. It's not like it's not actually it's that it's from the comics. But any, anyway, Tony Stark and then just, you know, some more images. It's gold stitching on on the inside with, you know, mostly black upholstery, Alcantara. And I am going to be traveling to Liverpool to get my butt molded for the car because I it's like it's a once in a lifetime experience, right? 
when am I gonna get a chance to ever do it again? I know it sounds absolutely silly, but one of my other friends is getting one. He did it, and he's like, you absolutely, absolutely have to do it. It'll be perfect. It'll be molded to you. It'll be, it'll be built specifically for you. Perfect distance between you and the wheel and the pedals and molded. So no, it's just the perfect shape for you. Make sure you keep going to the gym forever so you always fit in the car. It's It's been a really cool process to be able to just go back and forth directly with the factory to, to design the exact car the way you want it to look and just an incredibly unique experience overall. So shout out to Chris and Daniel from BAC who have been the ones I've, I've been talking to and, and designing the thing with along the way. And um, it's been it's been a pleasure and uh, I can't wait until I get to, you know, see what they've been working on when I when I go to get the seat measured. And then the car is actually supposed to come here and be assembled like really quick. They ship over all the all the parts and then it gets built here in California. And um yeah. Oh man, it's going to be it's going to be super cool. Another important part of this is like it's one thing to see the renders of this is going to be red carbon, this is going to be gold, but there's always going to be like a certain degree of of uncertainty as to how is this going to look when it's actually made. So, fortunately, they sent out some samples of the materials and I was able to choose from a few shades of the red carbon and a couple shades of the gold. So I've got the little swatches here. It's gonna be harder to see the, the true colors of the red carbon probably on camera here. It's going to, with the lighting, it really, you gotta see it in direct sunlight. So in, in less than optimal lighting conditions, it's going to be harder to get a, a true look at it. But basically, there was one through three coats on top of the black carbon that's underneath. So this is the, the single coat. And to me, it just looked like they tried coloring it, but it's not really that vibrant. But the trade-off is the more coats that you put, the harder it is to see the visible carbon, you just get a more vibrant red. And so you have to balance the two out. So then we moved over to two coat over here and it starts to look a little bit more red again. Direct sunlight is certainly more more optimal here. It does look more vibrant in the sunlight, but you get like a little bit more deeper red an acceptable deepness of red with good visibility in the carbon. The three coat here makes it so it's slightly more difficult to see the carbon in less than optimum lighting situations. But when you get it in direct sunlight, it is really pretty. But it's a trade-off again. It's like, well, do I know? Am I always going to be in the, the direct sunlight, optimum lighting condition? So it was like I slept on it for a couple nights between the, the two and the three. And uh, I ended up going with the Daniel from BAC. He thought I should do the three coat. All the guys at the factory thought I should do the three coat. And so I was just like, OK, we'll do the three coat. The gold, on the other hand, was a, a much easier choice. It gave me a, a couple swatches of, of gold. And um, it was pretty clear to me that the the lighter gold would be a bit a better bet. This was more kind of like a, a like dimmer orangey. It was very orangey is all. Um, so I ended up going with the lighter gold and the three coat carbon. And again, this is less than optimal lighting for the uh, the carbon, and it's very reflective off the gold right now with the lights in the studio. But anyway, that's what it's gonna be. And I've seen photos now of carbon panels uh, that have actually been manufactured. It's 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 good. It's good. It's looking good. It's looking good. <laughs> but man, uh, this whole process has been just a breath of fresh air. And like I said, uh, it may be the last car for for a while because I have no plans to sell the Ford GT, Carrera GT, same story, and uh, garage capacity is going to be limited. So it's just going to be, I don't know, would I ever sell this unless I can't fit in the seat anymore? <laughs> Which I guess, you know, you can order one of the standard seat sizes at that point and slot it in, but I'd be more motivated to get back into shape if that was the case, I feel like. So I'm going to be stuck with my cars, which is probably a good thing financially. So <laughs> anyway, thanks for tuning in. I'll film when I'm over, you know, doing the seat measurement. I think that'll be something cool to document. And of course, you know, 
when I take delivery of the car and, uh, and driving with it and stuff like that. So hopefully the first step in the in long process. But thanks for tuning in. Stay tuned for more and I will see you later.